Hello, um, my name's Jim Byrne. I'm the chief exec at Live Theatre in Newcastle. Uh, Live Theatre is one of the country's great new writing theatre companies. Uh, it's been uh, on the banks of the River Tyne for uh, about 44 years. Um, and what I'm talking about is uh, how a small to middle scale company um, de devise a series of projects that help sustain it into the future. In fact, much larger projects than you'd expect for a company of our scale. We always start with this conversation um, with the fact that we believe that any great city or place is built on the, the twin pillars of culture and economy. Um, if you get the culture of a place right, um, if the coffee shops are good and the museums and the cinema are, are, are great places to go, um, then these are the sorts of places that people want to live and work and learn in. And that means that the universities are succeeding, that businesses want to set up, and the tax base of that place grows. So culture is a very important part of how you transform a place, a city or a town. And it brings great value and helps to transform the city socially, culturally uh, and economically. So this is our, uh, our lovely theatre. It's a small 200 seat theatre. It's a crucible for our ideas. So our plays bounce from this theatre um, to around the world. Um, we co-produce work with lots of theatres around Britain and in other parts of the world. So it's a, it's a place where um, our ideas go from. It's also very intimate, almost visceral, uh, and our audiences love it. We live in some of the uh, most ancient buildings in the city. Some of our buildings are actually over 500 years old, and we've restored them and looked after them over the last sort of decade or so. This is one of our writer's rooms with the original uh, winch in. So our mission as a new writing producer is to create new world-class plays, uh, to develop creative talent, to unlock the potential of young people using art, theatre and culture, and to develop new economic models to sustain the organisation into the future. Um, the Pittman Painters, this production which opened our new theatre complex in 2007, uh, was written by Lee Hall. Lee Hall was a writer in residence at Live Theatre about 20 years ago, uh, where he wrote Dancer, which became the film Billy Elliot. Uh, and he's a long-time collaborator with Live Theatre. And this particular production uh, went straight to the National Theatre um, and then to a season on Broadway before coming back to London into the West End. This production, Tyne by Michael Chaplin, um, was part of our 40th um, anniversary celebrations, a commission for that year. Um, and you can see the Tyne Bridge being built in 1928. And uh, the red arrow indicates uh, an empty plot of land that's been there for actually over 100 years and l land that we've developed since. So we'll come back to that in a minute. We work with children and young people. Um, we have 300 young people in our youth theatre. We do plays, films and festivals. This is first draft. Um, they're new plays by nine-year-olds. Um, but we produce those um, plays in exactly the same way we'll um, uh, approach our main house productions. And in fact, in these shots are four actors that were in the Broadway production of Pittman Painters. So we co-produce a lot with many different people. Uh, we've worked with Sting, we've got uh, projects in the West End, national tours, we're working with the National Theatre of Scotland uh, on, on a production that um, tours nationally and internationally in a few weeks' time, and we win awards for our new plays. So that's a bit of a context for, the, for live theatre itself. But as we were building uh, what became our award-winning buildings um, in 2005, 2007, Looking to the future, we knew that we were going to have to do something different about increasing income because uh, our theatre's mostly sold out, so box office is unlikely to increase by very much. Uh, our fundraising is very good for the scale of operation that we are. We're a two million turnover operation, 30 staff, and we work with about 500 artists every year. But um, so the avenues for traditional income were closing down to us. And we could see that the public sector was about to uh, become 
uh, more, uh, more troublesome uh, and more difficult into the, into the future. So we looked at what we had. We, we sort of looked at our assets and um, we, th we looked at our people and our ideas uh, and indeed in our, our infrastructure and our buildings to see whether there was a way in which that could help us into the future. We knew it was going to be about creating a long-term income stream and that was probably going to be about creating an asset base um, that would in turn then create revenue. You can walk from Cambridge to London on Cambridge University land. So they've been buying land and buildings for something like 600 years and that is the way that they can create their own endowments. And we kind of thought, well actually, well, why can't live theatre do the same sort of thing? Not on the same scale, but you know, just uh, the same approach really. And at the same time, we also heard about the social enterprise movement, the, this notion of creating businesses that generate income, that then support the mission of the charity, uh, seemed like a really great idea to us, and so we, we pursued that too. So we've created four social enterprises in the last four years. Um, we've got a gastropub, uh, we have a digital business, we've got an incubator for small businesses, and we've got a major capital project that we've just completed, Liveworks. So it's about using debt to build. So charities generally don't like taking on or borrowing, uh, taking on debt. And, um, but we thought that actually if we could do this carefully, it would be the way to grow some of these projects. And we've used the whole toolkit um, from grant, which we always prefer, because you don't have to pay that back, but um, also government finance, city loans, European money, soft loans, and even, indeed, commercial loans and equity, using the whole of the financial toolkit to help make some of these projects happen. And Liveworks is a mix of all of those things. So, uh, about the projects in a bit more detail. The broad chair, we own the freehold, it was our building. We raised 400,000 pounds. It's run by a former Michelin star restaurateur. It's our, it was our third project with him. Um, and we simply get 10% of turnover, which is uh, about 125,000 pounds a year. Or in, a, in the way we think about it, it pays for a play a year. So the broad chair costs us 400,000 and it pays for a play a year, every year. Um, and it's increasing. It feels like it's been there forever. Our customers love it. Um, uh, it's in one of our bonded warehouses, these secure buildings by the docks or by the river. And uh, we have our own beer, which is made specially for us, writer's block. And uh, these scotch eggs are the best fundraising tool you could ever get. I sometimes say I've, run, uh, I've, I've raised at least a couple of million on the back of these scotch eggs. We've sold something like 35,000 since we've opened. And it wins awards. So it's fantastic for our customers and it's fantastic because it makes new plays for us. Beaplaywright.com has 240 people on the course. Um, it creates a small income for us, but it's also as much an advocacy tool. Uh, it's a course that's based on the work we do with writers here, um, but you pay for it online. Um, uh, the interactive course, you complete a module, you send it in, you get feedback, you move on to the next one. You do that five times, and by the time you've finished, you're sending a play in to be read. And then the schoolhouse, uh, it was a building attached to live theatre. Uh, it's a 1753 former schoolhouse. It was about a million pounds to purchase and develop. Um, and we now earn about 35,000 pounds a year uh, from, uh, from it. It's rented out to creative and digital companies. There's a music digital company, an historic building develop, development company, and an ecology company in there. Um, so what that building does for us is pay for an education project a year, like the first draft project I, I talked about earlier. It, um, it's a very simple approach to, to the design. All of these buildings are listed and problematic in terms of developing, but our approach to all of them has been to keep it contemporary and as simple as possible. So Liveworks, which is the fourth of the projects I'm talking about today, um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's effectively the purchase of the corner plot um, 
down the street of Broadchair and on the front of the quayside. Uh, and there's a development plot in the middle of it that we have worked on. So what we are creating with this is purchasing existing buildings, building a new office block and creating a children and young people's uh, writing centre that is supported by the commercial endeavours that, we, uh, that we're undertaking. It cost £11 million pounds, um, in total, five to purchase and six to build. Um, it's going to create an initial income of around £300,000 a year, that's three plays a year. Um, and we've made it happen with a government loan of £6 million, a European grant of £2.1 and fundraising of about £3 million. What it gives to us is a cultural and social and financial return. What it gives to the city is all those things too, and a political return. Um, this is what it used to look like uh, in the 1980s. Uh, the whole of the quayside needed regenerating, and, it has, um, and that has happened. And this is what it looks like now. Uh, a beautiful stone building that fits in with the rest of the historic quayside. This is a CGI of the back um, with the garden, the outdoor stage and the children's centre. And that's really what it looks like. Um, what we've created there is something like 15,000 square foot of office, um, of prime office. We have a tenant, they're moving in in about two, two or three weeks. Um, and overall, that will just sit as an asset on the charity's balance sheet, supporting the charity into the long term. It has a fantastic entrance from the quayside and lighting scheme. It's created by um, a great architecture firm, Flanagan Lawrence, based in London, that reflects the historic nature of the buildings around it. Um, it has lots of balconies looking out over the park or looking out over the river. And these are just some of the pictures uh, from the interior looking outwards over the river and then over the park. So all of those projects together um, add up to an expenditure of something like 20 odd million pounds. And we've raised that in eight years. And we're a great new writing company in Britain, one of the six new writing uh, producers. We have a fantastic reputation uh, and our plays go all over the world. But that, to me, that doesn't really explain quite how we've managed to uh, make all this happen. And I think it's the breadth of the community that we've worked with that is the answer to that. So obviously we have our audiences who love coming to live. They love sitting in the Undercroft, which is 500 years old, having a drink before the show, having some great food in one of our two restaurants, um, being three foot away from the stage uh, for, for a new play, coming out and then meeting the actors in the bar afterwards. It's a really great experience and special experience for them. We have the 300 young people that come through our doors every, uh, every week to the youth theatre. Um, we have 500 artists a year work for us, as I've said earlier, and then a community of students with our partnerships with Northumbria University and Sunderland University. And then the new businesses move, that have moved into the schoolhouse. There's 30 people working in the schoolhouse. There's 150 people working in the new live works building that will move in in a few weeks' time. And then there are the people that will use the park in the summer, watching films, and the families and the children and the volunteers that will be involved in Live Tales, our children's writing centre. And then we have the two best restaurants in town. They're always full. So all of these people are engaging with live theatre, and that, that, that broadens, that, that increases our breadth of engagement with the city and it deepens the roots that we have in this corner of the city. And I think it's, it's that collective set of reasons that um, explains how we've managed to raise all of these projects, be enterprising, and get the support of the city and various funders to, pull, to, to make them all happen. So coming back to the theme of culture and economy, we, we, we believe that we've transformed audiences uh, with the work that we produce, transformed young people, and artists and transformed this corner of the city. Um, we've regenerated this part of the city and made it a, a very beautiful place. We've restored these ancient buildings and given them a future. 
and we've engaged with many different communities and partners. But we've always done it with the highest quality of work, whether it's the work on stage or the way we approach design. And as a result of all of those things, we believe that we've got many more and many deeper roots in the city. And we have other projects that we're thinking of that we might do as well. Thank you.